What is going on guys? Greggles TV. This is the Dragon Touch Max 10 Plus tablet. It has a quantum dot display. So it has a QLED display and the display is actually really, really nice on here. The package for this goes for 170 bucks. When I'm making this video, there's a coupon on Amazon that gives you an additional 15 bucks. So you can basically almost get this for about 150 bucks for a tablet, 10 inches, three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, but it also has a, a micro SD card built in up to 128 gigs. So you can add that into storage as well. Android 10, 1920 by 1200 full HD display on here. And again, the display is definitely one of its strong points. There's GPS built into it. It can connect to 5G Wi-Fi and uh, it's black. So let's take a little bit closer look at the tablet first physically. And you'll notice at the bottom here, you're gonna get these little areas where you can connect an accessory, such as like a keyboard. On the other side, on one of the sides, I should say you get a headphone jack, so you can plug in regular old headphones. You also have a power button and then volume up and down. At the top, you get a USB-C port to charge the tablet. And that is pretty much it physically on there. And then inside the box with this tablet, you get a USB-A to USB-C port, uh, uh, cable I should say, and then a charging adapter so you can charge this thing up. When you do use this tablet, you can either use it vertically or horizontally. And there you go. And then let's jump into um, you know some things on here. So this is the home screen. It does not have a lot of apps pre-installed, which is beautiful. It's a plain kind of Android experience, again, which adds to not only hurting, sometimes when you get these tablets, if it has a lot of pre-installed apps, it hurts the performance of it. You don't get that with this in terms of a lot of apps installed. It's very bare bones, just Google apps. That's pretty much it. And then I installed a couple other apps, but there's no junkware apps on this at all. It's beautiful in that regard. Uh, when you swipe over to the left, you have your Google feed. So you get all your Google news. And obviously when you view it this way, it'll take over uh, for most of the full screen. One of the things with this tablet is it's not seemingly running the tablet version of their software. It feels like the phone version of it. And you'll see what I mean. I'll show you. Uh, when you swipe down, you get this. I mean, it just, I feel like and maybe I'm used to Samsung tablets, but it feels like more of a phone experience than an actual tablet experience because the 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 uh, the quick toggles and the notifications only take up a portion of the screen rather than the whole screen. You can control your home screens on here. You can change the wallpapers. You can add widgets. The home settings on here, if you want to change some of those on here, uh, you can do your notification dot. So you can turn that on and off. So if you get a notification, it'll put a little dot next to the app. You can add icons to your home screens as see fit. You can show the Google app. You can turn that on and off. Uh, that's when you swipe all the way over to the left. Pull down action, you can see you can either show notifications, open search, or do nothing when you swipe down from the top there. Uh, you have dynamic icons. Let's see, go back here. Uh, and again, you can change the grid size. You can change your home screen style from dual layer to single layer. So let's do that real quick. See what happens there. There you go. Make it a little bit more compact for you. And that's pretty much the home screen settings. I'll jump into here to the regular settings. You might notice that at the bottom here, I actually have a couple of different buttons. I was able to do that due to the fact that they have a little bit of customization built into this. So you can go into, or is it? We're gonna go into smart controls and you can turn on a couple of things here. You have a uh, lift to check the tablet. So when you lift the tablet up, it'll show your time notifications and other info to when you pick up the tablet, you can turn that on or off. You also have smart motion to pick up, flip, or shake device to control relevant applications. So you can turn that on or off to do certain actions. And then if we go into settings and just type navigation, you're gonna see you have the navigation bar. This is where you can really customize uh, certain things in here so that you have better control of certain items in here. So you can just have the basic buttons, you can switch the buttons, you can add, act add in the extra buttons like I have. So what we have at the bottom here is I have a button down here that'll hide the navigation buttons automatically. My recent apps button, my home button, 
my back button. And then I also have this button over here, which brings down my quick toggles and my notifications. I can press it again and it goes away. Now this is a $170 tablet, so it's not a speed demon by any stretch of the imagination. It's, if you're patient, I think you'll be pretty happy with it, but it's definitely not a speed demon of a tablet. Opening up apps and uh, you know navigating, it's not the smoothest experience for sure. So you can see it's still trying to load up. My internet's really fast at my house and uh, the you can see how long it's taken up to load these photos. They do load up, but I mean, that's why you pretty much have to be patient. So we'll open up this right here. Their uh, Sony WH4 deal that they're showing, but it looks great. I mean, the, the screen is beautiful on here. You can really zoom in and, and you can see the text looks fantastic even when you zoom in a lot in here. It's just uh, the performance of it with loading things up. Uh, I'm so used to having a, a high performing phone that, you know, going back to something like this, you can totally tell. But I mean, if you're coming from something that's already really slow or this might feel fast to you, or, you know, it's not, a, it, it's not that bad. So you can see that loaded up fairly quick. We'll click on this photo right here and zoom in on it. But yeah, the screen is amazing on here. It looks really good. So browsing the web, I think you'll be fairly happy uh, with doing that. Obviously having such a large tablet screen, you're gonna wanna probably watch videos. So, you know, Netflix does work on here. Open up your Netflix and go to town. You have the whole experience of Netflix and Hulu and any other video app that you want. So if you wanted to watch uh, the last blockbuster, tap on it hit play, you can even download them if you want. You can see it should start pretty quick. You can fast forward a little bit real Bell quick. Gas in Texas. So watching videos on this is gonna be a fantastic experience. I don't think you'll be unhappy. I will show you the audio. Audio is not the worst I've ever heard for speakers, but it's also not the, wor the best. So let me open up YouTube. All right, so we have YouTube open now at this point. I'm gonna play a video on here. Uh, let's play this one. What is going on, guys? Welcome to All right. TV so, Daily. Let's, let's hear it real quick, news. the sound. We've got one piece of news and then one question that I kind of go over and answer because today's news was like one of the slowest news days, especially on a weekday. It is wildly slow. So, let's get into the news. The first story is about the One UI 3.1 update. And if you're on AT&T here in the States... So, sound of... is a little lacking in bass. The volume is decent. Samsung phones. Put the volume up all the way. I think it's up all the way. Now have this really nice update. So you can see from this little list. So volume is definitely, I can definitely hear it even at its top volume. It's not the loudest speakers. It's definitely not the quietest. Um, but in terms of just, you know, listening to it, it's passable. Obviously you can get around with that. You can hook a headphone jack into this and, and listen to regular old headphones or you could even hook bluetooth up to this and get around that as well this plays up to 1080p 60 videos let me just make sure the audio is in tune with the a nice bit of, uh, yeah so it can there so it can handle a 1080p 60 video on youtube perfectly fine and the nice thing about this it fills up the whole screen. There's really nothing cut off on this when you're watching video, like some of the new, you know, 21 by nine aspect ratios phones that we have, you know, videos on this are again, gonna look really, really nice. All right, social media, this is Instagram on here. And again, it it's perfectly fine. It's, is it a speed demon? Does it load up, you know, every picture really quickly and amazingly? Mm, no, not really, uh, but after it's loaded up, it's it's totally passable. It's totally okay. Um, you know, and, and you get this huge display as well. So, you know, pictures come out humongous. As you can see, my boy right here, my guy, uh, DePoets, who's a real good guy. He's got his own YouTube channel. Check it out. But uh, yeah, you, you can see it. It's, you know, it's cool. So you can zoom in and it's just, it's great to see such a large display on here. You also might be on Twitter, so let's open up Twitter real quick here. And Twitter will work really in any orientation. You can use it in this orientation, or I like using tablets in this orientation just because it feels a little bit more comfortable uh, in my hands. But again, load it up fairly quick for the most part. And you can see it's not, you know, when I cycle through this, 
It takes a bit for it to load up, but otherwise it's, it's perfectly fine. So using this as a social media machine, you'll be pretty happy with all of that. And then let's close that. And then let's open up a bigger, more popular app, Facebook. So we're loading up Facebook now at this point. And you can see how long it takes to load up. Sometimes it loads up within a you know, sec couple seconds on your phone or your, your high power tablet. But this one's obviously going to be a little bit longer. So Facebook is known to have probably the, a lot of photos and you know on the screen. You can obviously look at your stories on here. So I'll tap that. Oh, it's going to want me to do it in this version, this orientation. There we go. It cuts it off a little bit, it looks like. You can also, one of the cool things on here is you can multitask. So if I hit the recent apps button, I can multitask on here. So I'm going to press and hold Facebook. And it's gonna say split screen. So I'm gonna choose split screen on here. And then I'm gonna choose um, another app. So we'll choose, uh, we'll just choose Twitter. But you could do this with a web browsing app or a video. And you can multitask and do multiple things on here. So you could look at you know, Facebook or shop or um, watch a video on one. So let's do that. Let's find YouTube. Where's YouTube? Here's YouTube. So we'll do YouTube on one. We'll play a video. And we'll be on Facebook at the same time. There you go. Fast forward a little bit maybe. Get that going. See how long it takes. There you go. Look at two things at once. Very, very cool. Beautiful large screen to do this on. So you can definitely multitask and do multiple things on here. Let's check out a game. Um, this is Iceman 3D. I was playing this a little bit earlier. I've never played it before, but it seems that when it does run it, it runs it kind of slow. Uh, like the frames per second aren't that high on here. And that's probably due because this isn't really like a, a beast of a performer. All right, I'm gonna freeze him. He's frozen, it looks like. I'm gonna move it over to him. Freeze this guy. Are these guys gonna crack or what? Do I have to still freeze him? I think he's frozen. Oh, there you go. Frozen. I cleared that stage. Now it also does have cameras on the front and on the back. So you could theoretically uh, use it to take photos. I mean, I don't know if you can see that or tell, but it's like, you know, it's not the greatest. I'll take a photo over here. Well, let's take a photo. I'll take a photo of, uh, this PlayStation controller just to show you it's you know it's just adjusting to the light is taking quite a long time for this you're not gonna want to you know use this as a camera I would not say but there you go there's a uh, photo I took and there's a photo of the controller but you can do videos you can do photos you could do video conferencing as well on this it's just not gonna be that amazing so with all that said you know this tablet is <clears throat> definitely a solid tablet for you know, media consumption, for social media, for web browsing, uh, for access to the Play Store. You get that full access to the Play Store to download apps and games. It's not gonna be a great gaming tablet. Uh, very simple, you know, bejeweled type games or like games like where you match, things like that. I think you'll be fine. Match three, where you match like three blocks and stuff in a row. I think it'll be fine for that, but overall, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's decent for its price. So if you want to pick it up, I'll link it down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.